Okay, now that we have the detail in ZBrush, let's talk about how to get this into Substance Painter as a displacement map. So I can see that this guy has, um, here's his original um, level one. I can see his good, good topology. And then I can see that if I go up to, um, I can see right here he's around 3,000 polys. If I go here, um, he's almost 12 million polys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to produce a displacement map from this and then view that in substance. So what I did here is I'm, I just went to, I just opened the divider up by double clicking on the divider. Z plugin. Here's multi map exporter. I'm just going to go ahead and drag this whole thing over here because I'm going to be using that. Um, now, once again, I could produce a displacement map down here. However, I feel like I'm going to have more uh, opportunity to adjust things over here. So I'm going to make a displacement. So I'm going to highlight displacement and I'm going to click on export options. And I can see that the auto save is in progress. I'm just going to disable that. Um, not a big fan of autosave. I feel like it should be called auto crash. Um, so I'm just going to let it finish here. And I don't even trust where it says um, press those keys to abort. So if you want to turn off autosave, I can just go into my preferences, quick save, and I can just turn this all the way up like that. There we go. Um, now, I'm going to say I want to do a 4096 map, okay, 4K map, and my export options. I'm going to leave this all alone. So it's 32-bit EXR. Um, I'll just go ahead and leave that alone, and I'm going to go to Create All Maps. And here I'm going to, um, you can see that I pushed these out for Maya. Those are 8K maps. I'm going to go here. I'm just going to do a new folder, and I'm going to call this Substance maps. Oh. I want to make sure that that uh, weird character is out of there. So I'm just, I need to uh, rename that. And then once I have that, so I'm going to go down here to rename. There we go. Open this up. And now I have an empty place for this. I'm going to call this uh, Okay, so it looks like it's uh, it's doing it. Um, I can see that it's creating the maps. It's writing the EXR files. And it looks like um, it's actually going to produce five of them because I have this guy set up as UDIMs in Maya, how I UV mapped him, meaning that he's using more than the zero to one space. Um, if that's confusing, don't worry about it. But basically, um, this is just a very complex setup that I have that I don't think your geometry is going to get more complex than this. So if you can do what I'm about to do, um, it would really work with any file. So I'm just going to let this finish creating its um, um, 4K displacement maps. And then I'll come back and we'll look, take a look at how we're going to put that into substance. Okay, so Here's the maps that it produced. I can see source images, substance, uh, the five maps. And if I click on this, I can see that it took a minute, 41 seconds. Um, now, with these, you can see that it tagged it with 1001, 1002, 1003, 4, and 5. Um, the reason that it tagged it like that, and, and I should have mentioned this before, is that if I go to file names, file names right here, I just switched this to UDIM, so I just clicked on this until I got to UDIM, um, and that's the naming convention that I want, and that's the naming convention that um, Substance Painter is al also going to want. So if yours doesn't have those tags on the end, I would recommend um, deleting those files, coming back in here under File Names, click until you see UDIM, and then click OK, and then uh, write those maps again. So. Now I'm done with um, with ZBrush. Actually, what I want to do here is I'm going to just go to Geometry, and I'm going to export out the lowest level. And I'm just worried about this. I'm not worried about his teeth and tongue right now, so I'm going to go to Export, and I'm going to make sure that that's set to OBJ. 
and I'm going to call this obj underscore uh, t-rex, and then I go l1 for level 1. Okay, just so I know that that's like his lowest subdivision level. And I'll hit save. And I'm saving it in the substance maps, just kind of keeping them all together. Save. Now, if I come into substance, I can go file, new. And I'm going to leave this at PBR Metal Rough. If it's not there, I'm just going to click and I'm going to go find PBR Metal Roughness. File. I'm going to click on select. And I'm going to go find... Um, this file. So it's in source images, substance maps. Here he is. And I'm going to go ahead and click open. I'm going to put my document resolution to 4K. Um, I want to make sure that uh, create a texture set per udim tile. If you have a newer version of substance, uh, I would recommend um, doing the newest udim workflow. Once again, if you have tiles outside of the 0 to 1 space, I'll go ahead and click OK. And the T-Rex should come in. And I'll just kind of show what this looks like um, in Maya. If I click on this, if I go to UV, UV Editor, I can see that this is what his UVs look like. Um, normally, we put the UVs all in this tile. But once again, using a UDIM workflow, I've got them in these tiles here. So that's why. I had to use that naming convention. And this is how it looks in Substance. In the old version of Substance, I can see that it just shows one tile here. And in the texture set list, if you don't see this, it might be here. And if you hover over these, it'll tell you what the name is of them are. And I can see that, oh, this one's my texture set list. And the texture set list are going to be each individual UV tile. Okay, And you can see that it broke it down into the five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the displacement map that I exported from ZBrush, and I'm going to import it into here. Now, some of you may be saying, well, wait a minute. If I go to my texture set settings, why don't I just bake the maps here and import my high-definition mesh? Well, if you do that, it can produce a normal map, but it cannot as I understand it, it cannot under, or it cannot produce a displacement map. That's why we had to export the displacement separately, and we're going to import those kind of manually. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So down here, I'm going to go to Import, Add Resource, and here they are, Substance Maps. This is my OBJ along with its material file. These are my... Um, five files that I'm going to bring in. I'm just going to bring in one at a time so I don't get confused. So I can see here's um, the first one, 1001. I'll click open. I'm going to just type in custom here. That's basically the keyword. If you ever need to find it, um, you could type in whatever there. I always type in custom. And then here I'm just going to say it's a texture. I'm also going to say I want to import it to the project, uh, this current project. Okay, and then I'll import. And now I can see that it comes here, and here it is. Okay, that's the um, file that we pushed out. And now I want to place this on um, our character. So I'm going to go to my texture set. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to my texture set settings, and I'm going to add. If I scroll down here, these are my current channels that I have. I'm going to go here and add a displacement. OK, there's displacement. But really, the one that I'm uh, most concerned about is the height. OK, so what I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and um, on texture set 1, OK, this is my first uh, texture set. And you can see here, that is my first one here. I have uh, file 1001, and I'm going to apply that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fill layer. And this is important to do this. I don't think this is obvious. I'm going to add a fill layer. And then on that fill layer, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to drag this onto height. 
Okay, and boom, right away I can see it, it's happening. And that's what that um, is responsible for. But I can see that maybe his spikes aren't sticking out too far. Um, and I'll fix that in a second. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and bring in the other files. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to add resource, and I'm going to bring in 1002. Now I'm going to just type in custom, undefined, texture. I'll br bring it in for this project and import. Here it is. Before I bring that on there, I'm going to go to my texture set list and switch to this one because that's appropriate. And now I'm going to go to fill layer and then I'm going to bring this onto height. And then I should magically see, aha, there it goes on that side. Uh, I'm going to continue this process. Here, import, add resource. Here it is, three. And you might say, well, why don't I just bring them all in? And I could, but I feel like I could get easily confused. I like to just make sure that this is um, correct, which ones I'm bringing in. I want to switch to three. Now I'm going to go to fill, add a fill layer. And then I'm going to bring that on to height. There we go. And I'm going to bring in number four. And then on number four, I want to make sure that I'm on number four. There we go. I'm going to add a fill layer. And then I'm going to drag this onto height. And then I'm going to go to import my last one. Custom. Texture. Import. There it is. And once again, switch to my other one and hit the paint bucket. And once again, I feel like on the newer versions of Substance Painter, I feel like this is a much faster process. Okay, but um, if you have the old version, this is how it's done. Okay, great. So I can see that, but I can also see that the spikes are not sticking up. Okay, like a displacement map. This is acting more like a normal map. Okay, so how do I do this? Well, if I hover over these, I can see that I'm looking for display settings. Actually, no, I'm looking for um, the shader settings. And if I click on shader settings, I'm going to just bring this over here. I see two tabs here. This one is my displacement tab. And if I click on that, I can see that, hey, here's my displacement. And what do I want that to drive from? Do I want it to drive from height or displacement? And you can see that um, I put it into height. So now if I drag this, I can see that it, yes, it does kind of displace, okay? And the tessellation mode, I'm going to say uniform and subdivision count. I'm going to say that this guy's divided up seven times um, because in ZBrush, I can see that he has seven subdivision levels. And now if I put that to seven and now kind of drag this out, I can see that, um, and it might need a really, really small number like 0 0.05, whoa, 0 0.01, okay, 0 0.005, uh, maybe even smaller than that, 0 0.001, uh, looks like maybe, 0 0.003. And now I can start to see that um, the displacement is, I can see it in real time in here. But once again, on this subdivision column, it's really important because if I don't have that, you can see it's not going to work. And the higher that I have this, kind of the more detail is going to allow it to be displaced. Um, and you can see that there are some limitations. I can see that where the seams are, I might have um, some a, a few gaps there. But once again, for the most part, this is um, it is doing a fairly good job to do this. I feel like it's hard for a real-time viewer to actually truly show an accurate displacement map. But 
now we're able to get our displacements from ZBrush into Substance. 